Indigo Park is the brand new mascot horror game to be released. The game has you returning to an old amusement park where you try to unlock the secrets on what happened to the place. Along the way, you will encounter lots of friendly and not so friendly faces. Wait, this is just puppy playtime again. Indigo Park is probably the game that I have the most split opinions on right now. After playing it for the first time on stream, I didn't actually know what to think of it. I actually played Pan Pan later on and even revisited Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 off camera to do some research and after having a little bit of a think about it, I don't like this game. Now I want to be as fair as possible when reviewing this game because this is the developer's first game and you can tell that some love was 100% put into this game. This isn't a cash grab like Garden of Ban Ban or Poppy Playtime. This had some love put into it, and as such, I want to express my opinions in such a way where I can be as helpful as possible instead of just putting the game down. So let's talk about why I don't like Indigo Park. Now first things first, we got to address the big elephant in the room. The mascot horror trope and how much this game takes from others. Now don't get me wrong, this game has a couple of unique ideas, and in 2024 it is pretty much impossible to come up with a completely original idea. But I feel like the entire chapter was just a worst version of Poppy Playtime Chapter 1. It felt like a carbon copy of that game in terms of what actually happens. I mean both games start with a commercial opening very similar to each other with the older male founder reminiscent of Walt Disney. This game definitely is not original, although a lot of the ideas are represented a bit differently than in the original game. The best example I can think of is Rambly, who definitely gives off Glamrock Freddy vibes from Security Bridge. However, it's not all bad. In fact, speaking of Rambly, he has to be the absolute best part of this entire game. He's funny, charming, cute as hell, and he definitely works as a main guide to the player. Also, I find him so funny, especially with how much he doesn't like Lloyd and some of his more savage moments. I find him super funny, although that leads to my next point about this game. If I'm being completely honest, I just do not find this game scary. Now, I did get scared one time, but besides that, there was literally nothing that I found scary about this game. I found the overall experience to be quite funny and goofy. The character designs are not scary at all, and not even in a meant to be kid friendly but a somehow creepy kind of way. These characters are just not scary. The characters are actually the reason that I started comparing this game to Ban Ban. None of them are honestly creative or really strike me as interesting, besides Rambly. Something about him just works for me. But for everyone else, it just doesn't. I wonder if it's because of the monster versions of them, because I don't mind the cutouts, although they do feel a little bit lazy compared to say the Smiling Critters for example. Having the characters just based off random animals feels weird to me, but I guess it's only a minor thing. Something about the characters that I will say has to do with the two main character interactions that we get in the first chapter, that being Lloyd the Lion and the Parrot, which I cannot remember their name to save my life. Out of the two, Lloyd probably scared me the most, and that is because one of his scripted jump scares actually got me kind of bad. But he is literally just a lion, and most of what got me was the lion roar sound effect, which by the way, just to be nitpicky, are actually tiger roars. They definitely sound better though, so it was definitely a good choice. But at the same time, it felt kind of bland after hearing it for the 10th time. This chapter has a lot of scripted jump scares and moments with the characters, and if I'm being honest, it really made the moments lose their impact, to the point that during one of the moments, I was just out of the trigger to make the parrot move and just sat there staring at it unsure of what to do. The parrot honestly is one of my least favourite character designs and I just remembered its name. It's Molly McCaw, I think. But every moment with them just feels kind of goofy and unlike Huggy from chapter 1, there's no real build up for the character. Sure, they appear in one section just beforehand, but it's not enough to get me interested or invested into the character. Once again, the amount of scripted jump scares or movements just didn't add enough to the character, and when the eventual scripted chase sequence happened, I have to admit I was severely disappointed. Not only did the chase sequence go on for way too long, but I barely got a look at the bird unless I died to it, which by the way, the jump scare and death message is an absolute joke. This was probably my least favourite part of the whole game. For starters, this isn't a jump scare, and secondly, considering that to my knowledge that this is the only character that who can kill you in this chapter, why do they have a Juniors inspired death screen? Not to mention the information is pointless. So I gotta say the whole chase sequence is a bit of a joke and something I cannot take seriously at all. 
Also, at the end, why is there so much blood? Like, what? Alright, let's break up this negativity with some positives. One thing I noticed about this game that I absolutely loved is how easy it was to figure out where you actually were meant to be going. This game takes something that I love from Bendy and tells you what your task is, which allows you to not spend 15 minutes walking around in a circle trying to figure it out. This chapter also had one puzzle, which was actually kind of creative and very well done. It was simple enough to figure out, but forced you to actually remember all the combinations. If this section with having to match the shapes and colors had the bird actually roaming around as kind of a threat, I feel like this section would have been a lot better. The Critic Cuff mechanic is honestly kind of pointless, although I wonder if it will have a more versatile use like the hands and puppy playtime do. But even still, I'm not too sure. So I have a small complaint about the environment. While I like the idea of an amusement park for a horror game, if you can even call this that, the actual area feels kind of small and a lot of the textures are just really off. Not to mention that this game has a really weird way of transporting the player to a new section without giving them a way to go back. Invisible walls are everywhere, and while they are totally fine to have, sometimes they do get annoying. Personally, I just didn't connect to the environment as much as I would have liked to, and that's a shame because I really wanted to get into this place and see a bunch of cool things. I wanted to see roller coaster rides and ferris wheels instead of play structures. This doesn't make me feel like I'm in an amusement park. Also, a quick side note, the player is really small, what the hell? Now, overall, considering how small this game is, how new the developer is to everything, and the fact that this game is free, I would actually definitely recommend checking this game out. Everything I have complained about may end up working for you, it just didn't really work for me. Overall, Rambly definitely carries this whole experience, and I do look forward to seeing where this ends up. This is definitely a weaker entry into the Mascot Horror series than some of the others, but it's still 100 times more enjoyable than Bam Bam. Also, the song at the end is absolutely amazing. It is the first chapter after all, and who knows what this game has in store. Anyways, that's my thought on this game. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.